Welcome to Roadcase, the podcast that explores the live music experience. Thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Josh Rosenberg, and I'll be taking you on a journey through in-depth interviews with performers and key people in the industry to explore the magic of live music, how it can be totally transformative for both fans and performers, and we'll look at how they take it all out on the road. It's going to be a great ride, so here we go. Welcome back to Road Case. This is Josh Rosenberg. Super psyched to be here. Um, we've got a lot of great episodes coming up in the next month and weeks to come. Uh, really happy that you're here. Thanks for joining me. I'd really like to encourage everyone to get involved with Road Case. Send me an email with your questions, comments, suggestions for guests. I'm at info at roadcasepod.com. Uh, and also follow us on uh, the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at RoadcasePod. Uh, if you can and are able to support this podcast on Patreon, we have a Patreon site at patreon.com slash roadcasepod. And of course, you can subscribe to this podcast on your favorite listening platform. So today I'm really excited to have Bobby Bear Jr. on Roadcase. Bobby is a Nashville-based um, artist who is originally a solo artist and now is involved in Guided by Voices. And it's a really interesting story. Bobby uh, first performed at the Grand Ole Opry with his dad when he was seven years old. Bobby talks a lot about being on the road with his dad and how much he loved that. And uh, he also talks a little bit about um, more of a DIY situation when he's been on the road solo. Now he's very happy with his situation with Guided by Voices. And he talks about seeing the fans and being able to kind of be an observer and just watching the guided by voices show and really appreciating the, uh, the incredible adulation that that band gets. And, um, you know, it's really, um, kind of interesting to look at the transition that, uh, he seems to be going through. I originally heard about Bobby from the documentary, don't follow me. I'm lost back in 2015, which documents, his life on the road as a solo artist and really takes an interesting look at the fan and performer interaction. So we talk about that a little bit. We also talk about his collaboration with My Morning Jacket on uh, an earlier album, which, um, of course, I love to do. So uh, we'll do all that. I want to thank everyone for joining me. And I know you'll love this interview with Bobby Bear Jr. So here we go. Okay, welcome to Road Case. We have Bobby Bear Jr. today with me. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? All right. Awesome. Um, Bobby's joining me from Nashville in this little digital box that is the thing we need to do these days, right? <laughs> Make believe. Reality. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. So you've really, you're the a touring's musician, musician. I mean, you're out on the road constantly and... Um, these days, that's not really happening as much. Can you just kind of bring us up to speed as to how you've been handling uh, this COVID period? What kind of happened? What happened right at the beginning? Were you on tour at that time? Or? We were rehearsing, I think. And yeah. yeah, we were about to rehearse. We were all on our way to Dayton to rehearse. Uh-huh. Uh, for some dates within the next month, I think. Yeah. And the week, as, as the days, as everybody was just about to leave town, uh, leave New York and drive to, uh, the rest of the guys were going to drive from New York to Dayton. They just, one by one, were like, I, I think that everything's shutting down, you know, and, and we just didn't make that trip. Yeah. And uh, that was March, you know. Right. <laughs> Did you have like a tour plans or were you sort of in between? Tours yeah, no, we had, we, we do like four or five gigs a month and we yeah. were about to start that. Right. And that obviously got canceled. Yeah. Well, how's your mind been on all this? I mean, how's your kind of. It got me weird about a week ago when I, I thought I had COVID for about an hour. Yeah. And my kids, two of my three kids had COVID. I mean, that, uh, it's just, it's just, yeah, I, I had a bit of a freak out about a week or so ago. How are your kids? Oh, they're, everybody's fine. Yeah. 
and you ended up not having it yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay all right that's good um how's it been emotionally for you during this time just uh not being on the road uh, i started mountain biking again mountain so, biking you said yeah so i do cool. an hour or so every day on the bike in the wood oh, right on there's no COVID in the wilderness nope and you know that and just hanging out with my dog and we've recorded three albums and uh more than that actually recorded three albums during this time yeah wow as uh solo albums or no yeah, i mean you're, you're involved also with guided by voices right yeah can you tell me a little bit about that collaboration uh it was originally going to be called before computers and we were going to do it without any computers then COVID hit yeah and we ended up doing it because of com computers <laughs> yeah right <laughs> so. yeah you were going to do it in spite of computers but then it was like oh no right. let's backtrack that this is absolutely necessary forget that idea yeah. <laughs> now this is all about computers now right totally i mean makes you grateful for computers um, how did the, uh, the collaboration, how did your involvement in Guided by Voices come about? I know that's more kind of a recent, um, a recent development, I like 2016 or Yeah. Well, kind of more recent. I mean, you've had a long career. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was opening for Guided by Voices and became friends with Bob and his wife, Sarah. Mm -hmm. And he had broke the band up for a couple of years and as he was rearranging his band they he called and asked if i wanted to be in guided by voices and i was like yeah i want to be in guided by voices <laughs> uh, of course I would, you know and, uh, i thought you'd never ask <laughs> yeah and uh i told my dad and he goes you're not a side man you're a front man Oh boy. I said, Dad, when's the last time you paid any band member or even Steven? He goes, Never. I go, Well, I'm not a side man. <laughs> Bob is very generous. Uh huh. Um, yeah, I mean, for you grew up as sort of the, you know, you're a Bob, you're a junior, and um, that was sort of the way that you made it onto the scene as a seven year old kid. I mean, I saw it in the, uh, in the uh, Don't Fool Me, I'm Lost documentary. Um, yeah how what's what's that been like do you have a good relationship with your dad and yeah is he sort yeah, of guiding is he, is he is he, he kind of um know, instrumental in your in your in your career you guys hang out together as much as we can during you know he's in double super lockdown because he's 85 years old and my yeah. mom's 80 mm. so they're in super ultra lockdown yeah same ages as my parents yeah i get that yeah and so uh that ain't easy, but yeah. But I talk to him and hang out as much as I can. Yeah, what's that like to have a dad that was? Uh, um, what was that like to be at the Grand Ole Opry when you were seven years old? <laughs> I just wanted to be cool. It looked like a cool <laughs> job. I wanted yeah. that job. Yeah, I wanted that gig. I mean, that kind of touring life, performing life, obviously is in your blood. Well, it it looked like a lot of fun, and it absolutely was a lot of fun. Yeah, was a lot of fun or is a lot of fun? Or do you mean uh, that in the past tense sense well, that it's not I happening did, right now? I did like the hit song with dad in 74 and did some touring with that. And then we did a family album. We did some touring like that. And then I took a break from, you know, 75, 76 till mm -hmm. 90. Eight. <laughs> wow, that's quite 90. a break. <laughs> that's not like coffee break uh, length. Yeah, so I, I took a break from the road. Actually, that whole time I was on the road selling T-shirts for my dad. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you work with him like and fourteen or fifteen. And you didn't play with him during that time. Nine or eighty. No, I just sold T-shirts. I didn't start playing guitar till I was twenty-two. No kidding. Yeah, I didn't write songs and play them for people till I was 20, 30. Wow. Actually, it's wow. one thing me and Bob Pollard have in common. 
but yeah, I didn't start playing my songs for people till 96, 97. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a publishing deal my fifth gig and a record deal my 10th gig, not because I was amazing, awesome, but because all my goofy friends from the dorm at Belmont College were all very well placed in the music business. And my cassette went to the top of the pile, basically. Wow. Okay. That's yeah. good to have friends in high places. You need people that want to see you succeed. Yeah. And if you have Absolutely. friends in, in, in really powerful places, they yeah. can make things happen for you. Absolutely. Yeah. You were going to take advantage told, of that. You need people pulling for you, rooting for you every bit right. of the way. Yeah. So up to that point, uh, when you started to perform your own songs and you were, if you were touring with your dad, uh, you said you were going to school. Um, was it something that you said it was cool, but it was, but you hadn't picked up a guitar until you were 22, but did you, it, how were you influenced by that time with your dad on the road? Uh, I mean, it, it was, it was a, a huge adventure. It made me hungry for adventure forever uh -huh. i'm still hungry for adventure i'm still dying to get out on the road and you know yeah what is it that you like about being on the road uh i have no idea everything uh what's the first thing that comes to your mind cities are for you kind of i mean there's always somebody at the club that can help you get into another club or there's always, you show up a day early and you can go to that club for free already and see what yeah. it is. Uh, I like driving. I like eating in a different, you know, every town has some place you've got to go eat at. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And it's, it makes you fat, but it's really fun. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, Bob goes in record store shops uh, for two or three hours in every town we go to, you know. Oh, no, no kidding. And, cool. um, you know, just out there seeking glory. Yeah, the beauty of the road. Well, if you like to drive and you like to eat, you like to play music and uh, uh, you like to meet people, then you're 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 doing the right thing All for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, you are kind of unloading the most dangerous part of every city. Usually. Right, right. Yeah. It's dangerous too. The driving is the most dangerous thing any of us do every day. Yeah, that's most true. It's not day. just going. It's not just going to the grocery store anymore. You know. Yeah, it's always been getting yeah. in a vehicle. So, yeah. um, have you been performing solo for most of the time since? Because uh, I did. I, I did a couple. The, I did a couple of those. I uh -huh. did a couple of. Uh, what is it called? Noon chorus. Yeah. A couple of those, uh, yeah. maybe more, maybe like four of those. Right. And that was great. That was How do you fun. feel? Yeah. You had a good time doing that. Yeah. I should do more. I just haven't. My daughter, they thought she got COVID the first time and she didn't have it. Uh, while I was, I was going to do one a week for like till through the summer, but then she, we thought she got COVID and I just, it, it just didn't make sense to keep doing them. Yeah. Oh, so you were going to do one a week of noon chorus, but you yeah. didn't. Uh, yeah. Cause she got sick. You weren't able to do that. Um, but over the last couple of years, have you been splitting your time between doing uh, solo gigs and guided by voices or has it been entirely guided by voices? Um, no, I, I did maybe two weeks of my own shows about uh -huh. two years ago. But How long? That, I rarely do any of my own shows. And do you miss performing uh, solo? Sometimes. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of nice to all of a sudden not be the front man. It's yeah, it's, it's a little really bit of a kind of nice to all of a sudden, you know, you you don't have to be responsible for the whole joy of the evening. Yeah, and it's I, sort of not having that. How how does that feel for you? Like it was what great. The, what, I just turn sideways and watch Bob all night long. That's the best show. <laughs> Yeah. And uh, I love it. I feel yeah. weird facing the audience and, you know, nobody's really there for me. They're there for Bob and so am I. Yeah, right. It's not like my, my show, you know. 
Right. Weird. So you don't necessarily miss being solo, but would you miss being on the road at all? I mean, you like. I really, I miss being in other towns and seeing my friends in other towns. Yeah. That's another yeah. thing I really like about the road is seeing my friends in other towns. Like I spent a month out of every year for the last 15 years in Portland mm -hmm. or, and Seattle, you know, and right. I just don't do right. that anymore. So it's quite of a different life for you with Guided by Voices versus what was portrayed in that documentary? Uh, would that be fair? Would that be fair? Uh, as far as being the boss, the road boss, yeah. I'm no longer the road boss. But, it, you know, it's still a lot of bands and hotel rooms. Did you like when you were, when it was more of a DIY type of operation, when you were touring solo, doing your own thing? It, I mean, everybody likes a lot of attention. You know, right. it's fun to get all the attention because you're the you get to decide the set list every night also but i love being a passenger <laughs> i uh, mean i i know that you know most of my friends that i've talked about to that are, are front men kind of like yeah sure I'd, I'd love to just kind of stand on the side of the stage and you know it's a relief it's fun being the front man also so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it seems like you don't really that you don't necessarily miss that enough to, to not want to to not want to go this route. But do you miss having that direct one to one sort of one to many you being the point of it, the contact with the fans and vice versa? Or do you feel like you're kind of getting that uh, when you're when you're I, out with Guided by Voices? No, I, I, I don't get that with Guided by Voices because Bob is the he's the MC. He is the master of ceremonies. He is right. The, He's the, he's the dude. I don't yeah. talk on the microphone. Right. I mean, but you're, yeah, you're, you're, yeah. you're still, you're still at the show. You're feeling the vibes, right? Oh yeah. I'm watching the show. You yeah. Know? Uh -huh. And I get to play guitar. So. That's interesting. It's kind of a totally different perspective than, uh, than what was uh, portrayed in that documentary. Not to lean so much in that documentary. I just found it. I did find that fascinating as to, uh, you know, uh, this portrayal of, you as a touring musician going around solo, but that's kind of not, that's not, that's not really what's happening these days, except during COVID when you are performing solo. Right. And have you done some house parties too, or no, something like that? I or should. Backyard parties? I No, nobody's, no. I don't know. Nobody, is people, are people doing those? Um, yeah. A couple of different bands here and there. I don't think it's no. as popular. I mean, certainly bands are asking people if they'd like to do that, but no, mm -hmm. huh. Would that be something that you would do? If, yeah, I've uh, done a lot of house parties. Yeah, in the past, That's right? Yeah. yeah. It's interesting. How is that, um, uh, in terms of like work ethic, I mean, um, is, it, is it kind of a different work flow, et cetera, when you're out with a band versus when you're touring solo? Uh, you gotta do all the driving if it's me by myself. That's hard. Yeah. Yeah, you like um, to do the driving yourself. Yeah, uh, when you're solo, and I've been opening up for a solo acoustic for bands that are on a in a van in a bus. Right, that's really hard because they'll do ten hours driving a day, and yeah, uh, yeah, that's tricky. Oh, guided by voices is um is uh, is a bus tour. Right? I mean, obviously they got like they set you up in a no, they they go by van. How do they we just it? have a van. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, Fair enough. We a van. Yeah. Interesting. The trick is the 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 deal is if you're in a van, you get hotel rooms. If you're in a bus, you live on the bus and you don't get hotel rooms. <laughs> right. So you end up really missing a hotel room uh when you're in a bus every night. Yeah, yeah. Which so you like you'd you prefer to be in the van and just be in the hotels, uh, yeah. whenever, when you can, yeah. yeah. Interesting, interesting. You've talked about um, something really interesting. I think you mentioned in the documentary um, the how you look at how people used to look at sheet music versus live shows. It's not how you look at sheet music. It's if you used to like a song. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. You, you didn't buy the record. You had to buy the sheet music, pay for the sheet music. Right. You didn't pay for the CD, you paid for the sheet music and then played it yourself at home. 
you know. And as and I, whenever I hear musicians whining about not making enough money, I always point out that we used to be right along the same levels as poets and painters. And because of technology, not because we got all of a sudden really fantastic, but because of technology, we can sell you the experience of listening to the music anytime you want. Right, right. Yep. We sell you this magic little disc that you can experience the music. In 1870, if you liked a band, which was, there was a band, but if you liked a certain composer, you had to wait till he, till he came near your Austrian village where you <laughs> would, you know, get in the cart for a day or so and go listen to that music once and then go back to your village the next day. You didn't get to, you did so, you know, we got to float so far above all these other artists for so long, making so much money. And now it's going back, back out in the air where it came from. And we really can't complain about that. We can complain about if other people are making the money off of it, but we yeah. can't complain about it going out for free and, you know, flying out the window because that's kind of what we used to do. Yeah, as a, historically as a uh, group of performing musicians, right? Yeah, you, you charged for that performance, but you didn't get to sell that performance 10 million times. You know, no, the technology no. allowed us to be that profited. Yeah, I mean, how, where would you stand if people came to your performances and recorded it for their own personal use? That would be okay I, for you. I usually don't care. I right. only care when they read video and they're spending more time. They're not experiencing the show. If they're, if they're, if you're filming something, you're not experiencing. No, you're not in the moment. Yeah. It's uh, nice to have a couple of different clips maybe to look at just as sort of a sou personal souvenir. But yeah, if you're in that the whole time, is that's annoying for you? Is that annoying uh, for you as a performer to see that? Just, it's like making love to somebody who's reading a magazine. <laughs> you know? hey, have, you, have you ever done that? <laughs> no, luckily, no. No. Uh, but it they're not paying it they're not experiencing the moment you know right. they're they're, right. they're recording it so they can get to it later on but right there was a point in the documentary where the people from kodak came to film the film crew because the film crew was actually using film mm -hmm. so kodak's filming the film crew who's filming me while I'm being filmed by everybody in the audience on their iPhone. And that's yeah. cuckoo. And it's all time warp shit. You know? Yeah, it's weird stuff. But I mean, it was it's interesting to see people do that for sure. When you see yeah. it, and maybe even when everyone else sees it portrayed in the movie, people are like, that's fucked up. That's just, it looks like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think like that when I'm at a show too, but yeah there was a yeah tribe. it's bizarre they, some missionaries discovered a tribe or or they stumbled upon a tribe the tribe weren't discovered they they'd always been there but uh some missionaries ran into a tribe in africa and they were taking pictures and there was a lot of the uh tribesmen that didn't want their picture taken because they thought it took their soul part of their soul. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Like in the and Amazon that, or something. Yeah. It's I've kind of true. You know, I mean, you are capturing a moment that you have to answer for later on, you know, and the guy who did the documentary had to edit two years. He had to relive two years of shows and interviews. You know, it's just, he's reliving. It's like, it's like Groundhog Day. He's having to live through stuff he's already seen and experienced. Yeah. Five right. different angles sometimes. Yeah. You know, I've been I mean, there. That's crazy. That's horrible. That's, you know, nobody should have to relive. It's like, it's just throwing years of your life out. It's horrible. <laughs> well, it was a great documentary, man. I, I like the documentary, but I'm sad that somebody had to relive time you know they had to go backwards and you know it, 
well, when you're sitting at the editing board, you're kind of not really you're, – you're, you're separated yourself from reality. I mean, then you're just putting together a piece of work. Yeah. You it's know, the it's, time it's different. Yeah, it's <laughs> weird. But yeah. I, love, I love what you talked about sheet music for, and live shows and equating what they – you know, musicians you'd only see once, and you could only see them at a live show yeah. when they performed historically, 17th that, century musicians, those... 18th century musicians. It must – yeah. That that's the concept. And then sheet music brings that to the people. They can repeat it. But the only way you're going to see that guy is just by going to see him. That would be really cool if it were like that yeah. today, too. I would I would have to say like. Right. I mean, although I personally, I think that I make the effort to get out there to see someone play. Right. Mm -hmm. Because that's it's just not the same. That's the only way when it's really yeah. it's really happening. Well, you're everybody's there in the moment. Yeah. And right. that's really magical and it fantastic. Is ma it is magic. What's your favorite thing about that when you're performing solo and, and it's all, it's all happening and people are responding to your music. I mean, I, I've been in the audience at enough guided by voices at a lot of guided by voices shows. And it's, I've only ever described it as being in church. It feels like church. It, everybody's moved like they're at church. Oh yeah. And I get, on stage now, I'll get teary-eyed twice a night because I know what it feels like. Mm -hmm. I can feel everybody else feeling it, and I know, yeah. I know how special that those moments are, you know. And yeah. I never took it for granted. I always just, you know, it's incredible how happy Bob makes people. It's really incredible, and that I get to be part of it is, wow. Yeah, that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's church. It's everything really. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you get to be there and do you ever like look out in the crowd and just see people that are grooving and just, you just kind of get off on that. People are just really, well, they know every word to every song, even a song that I learned a week before they know every <laughs> yeah. word. Yeah, right. Is that intimidating? It's mind blowing. <laughs> right. It's so amazing. Yeah. So even before the documentary, and we were talking about this before we went on the air, um, you worked on an album with My Morning Jacket. How did you know them originally? Uh, me and Grimey were roommates from Grimey's, from Grimey's record store. And we mm -hmm. were roommates in 94. And this guy, Mike Martinovich, was working at Sony with Grimey. And um, Mike was a big part of Bear Jr. when we were at Sony and Mike uh, eventually discovered my morning jacket. So Mike was an old friend of ours and he brought them to Nashville to play for Luke Lewis and different, you know, record company people. Mm -hmm. And I got to meet those guys then. Yeah. And that then, was like around what time frame? Nine, uh, 2000, and one, uh -huh. maybe, yeah, probably 2001, 2002. And At Dawn had just come out and uh, we just became buddies. Uh, they played a show with me here at the Slow Bar, which is like a 200 seat room before uh -huh. anybody had heard of them. And it was really magical. and. You know, they're they remain buddies, and yeah, I, I don't really it's just you meet you. Well, Carl, the guitar player, was in a band called Old Pike that opened up for Bear Jr. Yep. in '99, mm -hmm. and then Carl called me one day and said, "Hey, I'm auditioning for this band, My Morning Jacket. I hear your buddies with them, and would you put in a good word?" And I was like, "Yeah," but they. I'm, I mean, I talked to Jim about it, but they said it wasn't even close. The, Carl was the first guy to audition, and <laughs> it was just, you know, he's from Bloomington, which is like just down the street from Louisville, and just like, right. and he was twice as good as everybody they auditioned, and <laughs> he was just, the, you know, it had nothing to do with my recommendation. Carl uh, definitely got the gig. Yeah, Carl rocks. Yeah. always ha always has 
Yeah. I, I know one of the guys from, well, I know Carl, but I know one of the guys, another guy from Old Pike, um, Jason Brammer, who uh, who lives in Chicago now. We practice yoga from time to time together when we were in the studio. Jason's so in Chicago. Yeah, he is. No, what do does know? he do? What does he do there? He's an artist and he does uh, murals and other painting projects here, indoor and, and outdoor. He does some really incredible stuff. You should check it out. Crazy. Um, that, so that's, that's interesting. And you were telling me that, um, uh, and I was telling you how much I love the song Jesus Sandals and uh, how I just, I'm, I'm singing that song in my head all day long. And you were equating it to another, to another jacket song. Can you tell me about that? Uh, I, had, I had a song idea that went da 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 and I played it for Carl while we were writing Jesus sandals and he came up with da 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 yeah and yeah. then they were writing a jacket record at the same time and then four or five min like uh months later their first single or that album comes out and I hear da 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 yeah right and I'm like hey wait a minute hold it on to black metal on top of each other you can it's all the same landing space yeah right 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 it's the same key the key didn't yeah yeah I mean it does I'm sure they didn't even Realize. Well, the, fortunately, they were involved in their own in their own um, uh, copying. <laughs> they were well, they were involved. Uh, I, they, they I don't think they got writing credit for black metal, but I know for certain Carl wrote that line. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying they ripped me off. I'm saying Carl ripped off Carl. <laughs> no, no, it's what I'm kind of saying. I just didn't know how to say it technically, right? <laughs> yeah, but, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't matter. No, it's a great song. I just wanted to hear you uh, tell. I wanted to hear you tell that story. How has it been um, for you to kind of incorporate yourself into the Guided by Voices world, coming from touring solo so much, now being with this band that obviously you love so much mm -hmm. um ha, did you did you go in thinking you wanted to give a certain uh type of input or no. does it just kind of happen organically no it uh there is no i mean it's bob's vision it's all mm -hmm. about give you know trying to uh help bob get what he wants because he's got a, thousands of ideas yeah you know, and it's all about you know, I'm, I'm, I'm used to being on the road to my dad, you know, mm -hmm. also I've been on the road to my dad a lot and he's the road boss, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And when I'm, and got, when I'm out with Bob, Bob's the road boss and I know what it's like to like, what does he want? This is what we're doing. He's the, he's the Colonel, you know, Yeah, yeah. you got a leader and he's the leader. My gig is to just not get fired. <laughs> 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 that's you've been successful at that so far uh, yeah is to just not uh step in it you know and, yeah uh it, it's fun i mean it's a blast right but i i mean i i get to sing background vocals sometimes you know and the, he he does want your input on lots of things but he's got so many he's got such vision of how everything needs to be does that make does does um does that make you feel like you want that you have things that you want to do solo because you're maybe not getting that no uh, i did i did 20 years of solo you know i mean yeah i'm thrilled to to jump in the passenger seat and that's and, cool that's great to hear man yeah you know. that's great to hear you know i was just trying to contrast it to how uh, you know, how your career has moved since then and um, or prior to that. But looking at that, I was um, I've been curious, like, how was your um, your your career in rock kind of been a um, how was that a reaction to your either your relationship with your dad and your relationship with country coming up? Uh, what what are you asking again? Well, how the rock you're, world yeah you're in the it. rock world but you grew up in the country world is it yeah, are those things two no, things very different for you or say it's kind of like 
dad sold trucks and us dad was a truck salesman and i'm a motorcycle salesman his his band was a very much it was a very rock and roll experience okay. his band was a notorious wild bunch of guys and we were playing gillies and billy bobs and college frat parties and you know just all kinds of different wild and crazy adventures you know yeah yeah so what is the true representation of a song going back to sheet music versus live is it the original performer or is it the person that's playing it at that moment it's it's the person that's playing it at that moment as they're communicating it to the audience mm -hmm. as they're as they're you know some people i know some really talented people who don't know how to connect with an audience yeah yeah don't know sure. how to get an audience on their side and don't know how to entertain you know and yeah. that's what you're there to do you're there to entertain yeah and have fun with them not at them or you know you're there to have a back and forth i like i like doing house parties a lot because i do it with no pa so if somebody requests a song i'll go sit right in front of them and go okay man oh that's wonderful are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah right hold on <laughs> you wow. here. That's or i'll walk up. That's... through the room you know i'll stand behind everybody for a little while yeah. and i'll usually have my background singer Carrie Katsianis, and she'll stand in a balcony and i'll be downstairs and and we'll she'll sing harmonies while i do my thing you know oh, that's we, cool that's so cool it, it's really fun yeah i miss that a lot huh so to be able to just completely change the way that people hear music too is another thing that you can do your ears respond differently to no pa you, hold on you, you just um Bo quiet bobby bobby you just, you're really quiet you, you broke up just a little bit can you just say yeah. that again you can get really really quiet when you're performing uh, with no pa and when you when you're that quiet you can also get really loud and really fuck with people because you're pulling them in a whole lot more than you're with PA you're you're blasting out out at people and with no PA you you know first of all the wall isn't there like yeah. I'm over here you're over there it doesn't exist right and um and that makes people uneasy but it's also a good thing they're they have to be more open to to stuff going all over the room you know and yeah if they request that song it better they not they better not just be fucking with you. They better know that song if you're going to stand right in front of them and sing it to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. I love that. It's a totally yeah. listening experience. I want to have I want to have you do a I've house been party. Something like 80, 90 people out outdoors in Austin. Uh huh. And everybody can you know I'm pretty loud luckily, but everybody can hear everything. You know, and everybody's really trying to hear and, you know, it, it, it's really fun. Right. Yeah. When the house gets quiet and there's not a bunch of clinking glasses and there's no show talkers yeah. at a house party, right. clearly. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's that's like super cool. That's totally pure. And just that's that's it's just amazing. It's fun. Um, I wanted to talk for a minute. Justin Towns Earl, you know, he passed away earlier this year. Um, and what was your relationship with him and how did that kind of that, how, how did that affect you? I'm really I sorry met Justin happened. when he was 16 when I was working at a bike shop. Oh yeah. And he brought a bike by and I, then I've just known him throughout. I had friends of his were in my band. He lived in my house here for a year when he was first, when he wrote the, uh, the good life when he was living upstairs here in the house. Uh huh. And, um, I really, I, he kind of, I know he, he opened up for me a ton. God, I've, I've had eight people really close people to me die in the last year. And it's still hard to, oh. uh, 
just sorry, really sorry to hear about that around, you know, but he kind of separated himself. He, none of his good friends knew anything about what was up with him for the last seven or eight years, probably nothing that was going on with him personally and emotionally. Yeah. yeah that's sad and tragic. Like he really kind of connected with most everybody. Um, you know, he had a, a wife, he had a baby with and things like that, but he, I didn't even know he was living in Nashville when he, and he died here, you know, hmm. but I didn't even know he was in town, but yeah. it's just real sad. Yeah, totally. It's a tough time. It's a tough time for so many different things and, you know, but we've always got the music that's not going anywhere. Um, I hope you, I hope you'll choose to do some more solo stuff and streaming, you know, with, you know, yeah. I know the guys over at noon chorus, they're really cool. Um, and, um, you know, I hope you'll do eventually do some house parties maybe when we start moving back to, uh, even getting together kind of on a socially distant basis. What is, um, what's uh, guided by voices plans kind of thinking uh, about getting, I mean, uh, the, uh, yeah. uh, the, the new we albums or do they have dates for releases of those or yeah, we, we just don't know. What about the new material? You guys, you, you said, Oh, you're... you know, we've got, I think there's something coming out in January. There's yeah, there's, uh, there's, we did three albums this year and I, I'm not sure how many we'll do next year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I look forward to seeing you out on the road as soon as everybody gets out there, which kind of maybe looks like next summer or something like that, hopefully. Yeah, no, there's, there's, we're going to do some touring. It's just, we've got, we're going to have four albums worth of music to play. Right. When we yeah. Well, four hour shows aren't unheard of, man. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to definitely come out and see you. Um, so thanks for being with me, Bobby. I really, I really appreciate talking to you. It's been a pleasure to hear some of your, um, uh, your perspectives on touring and, uh, your career and with, uh, guided by voices, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks so much. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. Okay. All right. Talk okay. to you. Bye. 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 Okay, there you have it, Bobby Bear Jr. on Roadcase. I want to thank him again for being here. He's got a lot of great material uh, this year that they've done in quarantine with uh, Guided by Voices. And uh, he talked about having another um, album coming out in January. Looking forward to hearing that and to seeing them tour that. Uh, hopefully, sooner than later in 2021, we'll see about that. I really enjoyed hearing Bobby's philosophical take on the live performance and how historically individuals would have to travel days to see a piece of music being performed. And as a touring musician, uh, he really has a reverence for the live show. And you can tell how that comes across in his performances with Guided by Voices and the way he thinks about his role in that band. Uh, I'd like to thank Bobby again for being here on Roadcase. Thanks again so much for listening. And I'd like to encourage everyone to get involved with Roadcase. You can do so in a number of different ways. You can email me at info at roadcasepod.com with questions, comments, and even suggestions for guests. Or you can follow us on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. We're at Roadcase Pod. And we have a YouTube channel called Roadcase Podcast. And if you are able to and like to support Roadcase, we have a Patreon site at patreon.com slash roadcasepod. And of course, you can subscribe to this podcast on your favorite listening platform. And if you could please rate and review the podcast while you're there, that would be great. So I want to thank Waltzer for this awesome theme music that we have. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in and listening to Roadcase. We have a lot of great episodes coming up, so I'll see you on down the road. Yeah.